This morning we're going on a bit of a road trip because I'm just about to leave to head to Carlisle where we're going to be installing an air source heat pump for a customer. This customer got in touch with us through one of the heat pump groups on Facebook because we put on a post showing off a couple of our jobs and I think we had the efficiencies that we've been getting on there. So he reached out because he'd been struggling to get an installer in the area. He'd had a price from British Gas and he was waiting for an install from Octopus but I don't think they had anyone in the area so I think he'd been waiting for months and he'd had no reply so he was really keen to get a heat pump so he asked us to go over there and do the heat loss survey. So we went over there and did the heat loss survey about three months ago and after the heat loss survey I did two different designs for him. We showed him what the 40 degree and 45 degree design temperatures would look like and in terms of radiators it meant three radiators would have to be triple panels instead of doubles and we would have had to go with bigger decorative ones on another two just to get the right heat output for the rooms. We also priced both different options to show him what the financial implications would be and in the end he went with the 40 degree which was the lower design temperature and he thought the extra money was worth it now to get a more efficient system in the long run. The job's at Low Hesket near Carlisle and it's only about an hour and a half drive at this time of the morning but it will be about two hours later on the day. So our plan is to stay there for two nights, hopefully get a good finish on the third day so we can get home in good time. I'm going to get going now so I'll tell you a bit more about the house once we arrive. just arrived at the house which is a three bed detached property it's got quite good levels of insulation with 300 mil of loft insulation it's got double glazed windows and pvc doors the total heat loss of the house was 5.4 kilowatts and that was at a design temperature of minus 4.3 degrees the current system's an old external oil boiler so we're going to make a start removing that and hopefully the heat pump cylinder and radiators arrive soon We're just around the back of the house now and as you can see the old oil boiler is gone and we've got the heat pump roughly in position. We've been working on the flow and return pipes, the electrics and also the temperature and pressure relief valve from the cylinder. When we're doing heat pumps no one really wants a load of pipes on the outside of the house so we'll try to do it as neat as possible. So here we're going to have the electrics, the pressure relief valve and the flow and return so we've got four pipes going down. So what we've tried to do is make it as neat as possible and take the temperature and pressure and discharge pipe down the back along with the electrics and then take the primary pipe work that's going to have the condensate pro insulation over the top so it kind of hides it as much as possible. So it's always a case that we need to try and plan these jobs out as well as possible and get the pipe work that's going closest to the wall down first and then come over the top with our finished pipe work. In terms of the electrics to the heat pump we've got our main supply that comes straight from the main DB across the house and then down the trunk and, and into the electrical isolator that then feeds the main supply to the heat pump but we've also got a comms cable that comes into the heat pump or a bus cable so that just goes back to the heat pump interface and that's what really tells the heat pump when to turn on and how hard it should be working because we've got low voltage and extra low voltage wiring running to the heat pump you're supposed to have separation between the two wires we've actually run it through the same conduit on this job just to prevent another piece of conduit being on the outside of the house and it not looking very good so what we've done instead, we've used a sheath cable just to protect it from any interference or in case there's any other damage to the conduit. For the flow and return pipe work where it goes into the building, what we've done is we've drilled a core hole big enough to be able to sleeve that pipe work and also insulate it right the way through the fabric of the building. We've had some other heat pump installers getting in touch or commenting on the videos and asking for different ways they can save time on the job or how they can make the job easier. One of the biggest recommendations is get a good core drill. So we have recently bought this, which is probably massively over spec but now jobs that were taking 45 minutes are taking five minutes. So it's been one of the best investments we've made. While I'm doing all the pipe work outside, Mark's in the cylinder cupboard and Cameron's doing the radiators. That's most of the primary pipe work done now, so it's insulated through the wall and down to almost floor level. We just need to make our final connections onto the heat pump tomorrow. We've used primary pro insulation again on this job and the way we've managed to do it has turned out really well. So the electrics and the discharge pipes hidden nicely behind the two primary pipes. On the last video we posted, we had a few comments from people saying that they prefer to see the primary pipe work inside of Trunken. 
and on our first few jobs we actually did use trunking but ever since we started using the primary pro we realized that it's actually a better finish with the trunking it's quite difficult to get the pipes inside with the right level of insulation on and it's actually impossible to get it in there with the pipes clipped over the top of the insulation like it should be so that's the end of day one and just in time as well because it started to rain so it's off to find our hotel so we'll get some food and some rest ahead of another big day tomorrow It's Wednesday morning and it's day number two in this heat pump install. We had a really good day yesterday, so hopefully by the end of the day we might be able to get this heat pump up and running. If we do manage to get it on, we'll still have quite a bit of balancing and insulating the internal pipe work tomorrow, but at least we can get a bit of heat in the house overnight. Cameron's connecting the last few radiators and Mark's finishing off inside the cylinder cupboard, so I'm going to do the last little bits on the heat pump outside. So the first thing I need to do is put the heat pump in its final position and make sure everything's nice and level and then do the final connections to get onto the primary flow and return pipe work. That's the heat pump in its final position, so we've made sure it's all nice and level and then we've screwed the feet to the ground just to prevent any movement. When we're locating the valent units, we need to make sure that we're putting it somewhere that's got the correct safe zone around it. So the protective zone is because it uses a refrigerant and it can be flammable. So we need to make sure that there's no openings to the building or any sources of ignition in the protective zone. But for this one, we've got a good meter either side of it and the windows are all above the unit, so that's totally fine. We do have a couple of gullies either side of the unit and in the old instruction manual, it said that we can't have any grooves or anywhere where the refrigerant can build up. But in the new manual, it says that gullies and waste grates are totally fine. And because we've got these gullies here, that means that we don't have to dig a soap away on this one. And we can actually take the condensate pipe work straight into the gully but you have to make sure that it's a trap gully, it can't go directly to the sewer. That's all the pipe work connected up at the back of the unit now, so I'm gonna take a couple of the fittings off so we can get the power flush machine connected up. And then once Mark's finished with the cylinder and Cameron's finished with the radiators, we can start power flushing the system. It's been a bit of a busy day today, so we haven't managed to record as much of the install as I was hoping to, but the customer told us that the temperature is really going to drop tonight, so we've been trying our best to get the heat pump up and running before we leave. So Mark's finished in the cylinder cupboard and Cameron's finished on the radiators, and we've power flushed the system just to make sure everything's nice and clean before the heat pump's even attached. We've managed to get the power supplies across and wired into the main DB, and we've also managed to wire in all the heat pump controls. So the heat pump's actually now up and running, so I don't know if you can hear it, but that's in hot water mode at the moment so it's working pretty hard to get up the temperature even though the heat pumps up and running we've still got quite a lot of stuff to do tomorrow so i need to finish off the insulation behind the unit mark needs to insulate all the pipes in the cylinder cupboard then we need to balance the system just to make sure that all the heat's being distributed evenly across the radiators and we've also got the paperwork and handover to do where we explain all the controls to the customer It's day number three in this install and it's started to rain again. So luckily we've pretty much finished outside. So we've just got a little bit of insulation to do on the external flow and return pipe work. Then that's all done. Mark's busy lagging the cylinder cupboard and then we've got to finish balancing all the radiators. So a little bit more about the design on this system and it's a complete open loop system. We don't have any buffers, any low loss headers or any separation in the system. So the flow and return pipe runs straight up into the cylinder cupboard. From there it can either satisfy hot water or go to central heating and then it comes straight back to the heat pump. We don't have any secondary pumps or anything like that in there. It's all satisfied from the heat pump itself. When we're designing systems like this, we need to make sure that all the pipe works size correctly. So to do that, we need to take into account the velocity of the water going through the system and also the resistance of the pipe work and fittings, just so we can make sure that the pump inside the unit is big enough to push all of the water through the system. The way that we protect the system from frost can also make a difference to the pipe sizing. So if we're using glycol, that changes how well the water can actually absorb the heat from the heat pump. So sometimes you actually need to go up a pipe size if you're using that rather than the antifreeze valves. On this install, we've used inch pipe work to come off the back of the unit and then up to the cylinder cupboard. It then reduces down to 22 mil pipe work. We've actually got some 10 mil copper pipe work feeding two of the radiators in the property, but I've done the calculations and it's more than enough for what we need. 
we could have actually got away with using 22 mil pipework from the unit up to the cylinder cupboard but we've got inch pipe work on the diverter valve in the cylinder cupboard anyway and it just gives us a little bit extra system volume so i thought i'd just use inch anyway if you're going to be installing a heat pump without a volumizer or a buffer vessel you need to make sure that there's enough volume inside the system and that just makes sure that the heat pump doesn't cycle on and off too much because the startup process is quite inefficient on heat pumps you want them working as long as possible we're just inside the property now where all the work inside the cylinder cupboard's being complete so the flow and return pipe work runs just from the other side of that wall it runs through into the landing space and into the cylinder cupboard the flow pipe runs up and through the domestic hot water priority valve where it either goes to the hot water or down to the central heating the return from the central heating comes up and joins onto the return from the cylinder it goes through the filter and then back down through a Y strainer and then back to the heat pump. For the electrical side of the installation, we've got all the wires that come back to the heat pump interface on this job. So I mentioned before that the main power supply goes directly to the heat pump and then the other wire that we've got coming back from the heat pump to the control interface is our communication or bus cable. That bus wire also joins onto the receiver from our sensor comfort controls and also the sensor net gateway. The only other wires are the main supply for the heat pump interface. We've got a cable that comes down to control the domestic hot water priority valve and also a wire for the cylinder sensor. In terms of controls for the heat pump, we always use the valent sensor comfort controls with the valent units and that comes with an outdoor weather sensor as well so it's a fully weather compensating unit. I would never recommend using third party controls with a heat pump, you get much more efficiency by using the manufacturer's controls. A few people have asked us if we can fit nests or hive to heat pumps and it's just a no straight away, you always want to fit the manufacturer's controls to the units. Another good thing about the VLN controls is a sensor net gateway. So this allows the customer access to an app so they can make changes remotely to the system. It also gives me access to an installer app as well, so if we need to make slight changes to the weather curve or if the customer's not sure how to change some settings, I can actually do that remotely rather than coming out to the job. That's the installation complete and just in time as well because it's really starting to come down now. But we've gave the handover pack to the customer and explained exactly how to use the system. One thing I wanted to mention about heat pumps is it's really easy to make pipe work look nice. So a lot of the things that you see here is the easy stuff. The main part of the air source heat pump installation is coming out and doing the survey correctly and then sizing the radiators and the pipe work to make the system work efficiently. That part of the job is way more important than if the pipe works straight or if it's insulated well, because if it's not designed right, it's not going to work properly. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you've got any questions about heat pumps, please leave a comment and I'll try and help or visit our website at greenhomeheating.co.uk.